Good morning, and welcome to UVC. My name is Greg. I go by he, him, and his, and I am the worship leader at UVC Edgewater. I want to welcome you here because God loves you, no matter what anybody else may have said. Please know that God loves you. Here we are once again, coming from our homes on Facebook and on YouTube. It could be in the future, but I'll tell you what. Right now, I know a lot of us are going through kind of a COVID coma. So please join in this worship service that we have here today. And let's begin. Our first collaboration will be led by Alex as we sing Better Than a Hallelujah. God loves a lullaby in a mother's ears in the dead of night Better than a hallelujah sometimes I loves the drunkard's cry, the soldier's plea not to let him die Better than a hallelujah sometimes We pour out our misery, God just don't always know the things that God cherishes in us because we are God's creations. God knows that we're going to mess up. God knows we make mistakes. God loves us unconditionally. It is my prayer, my absolute prayer, that we do not know fear. But right now, I know a lot of us do, and it's completely understandable. I want to remind you that God is with you, no matter what kind of fear or frustration or anger you might have, God is there with you and God will not abandon you in this time because only in God's presence and hand in hand can we really be fearless. This collaboration is being led by Amy.
What lies ahead may be unknown As I brave the unseen road God, go with me Every hidden sacrifice Through the watches of the night God, go with me is gray. No fear in the midnight hour. You've given me a spirit of power. No fear in the crashing wave. No fear when the cost is great. No fear in the midnight hour. You've given me a spirit of power. join me in prayer. Gracious God, God of all, God of the universe, of the greatest and smallest things, God who created all of us, we thank you. We thank you for being there. We thank you for saying, I am yours and accepting us unconditionally. I pray that we can withstand all the slings and arrows coming fast and furious from us at all corners, that we survive our shortages, our fear, this health disaster that we are experiencing, that we survive the empty grocery stores. I thank you. I know what it means to walk in and see something. I know what it is to walk in and see toilet paper finally after a long time. Thank you, God, for helping us to know that you are with us through all of this. I want to reach out and say I'm doing well, and it's because of you. I want to thank you for the wonderful people who've come together to collaborate on this worship set and on the closing song, which is to come. I want to thank you for today. And even as we are here because of you, 
gathered virtually, two or more, you are here. And so, as we come together on this last song in this worship set, let's sing your praise, because you are our God. Not only the God of field and of mountain and of river and lake and ocean, but of this very city. And I thank you. Amen. You're the God of this city. You're the King of these people. You're the Lord of this nation. You are. You're the light in this darkness. You're the hope to the hopeless. You're the peace to the restless. You are. There is no one like our God. There is no one like our God. things have yet to come and greater things are still to be done in this city greater things have yet to come and greater things are still to be done in this city you're the god of this city you look over your people, you're the Lord of this nation, you are. You're the light in this darkness, you're the hope to the hopeless, you're the peace to the restless, you are. There is no one like our God. There no one like our God. Well, greater things have yet to come, and greater things are still to be done in this city. Greater things have yet to come, and greater things are still to be done in this city. Hello, 
I'm Hannah Carden. I'm the teaching pastor at Urban Village Church. If you talk about me, you can use the pronouns she and her. And welcome to worship with us. We are so grateful to be worshiping with you here today, to have that music that just uplifted us, to be preparing to share in community and communion together. It is an enormous gift, and you are an enormous gift. And thank you for sharing it with us. Here at Urban Village Church, we have a mission that we are always on, and that is to create Jesus-loving, inclusive communities that ignite the city. Woo! -hoo! I'll leave time for you to yell about that. <laughs> um, and we do that in three ways, through being bold, inclusive, and relevant. Those are things that we are always seeking to be in our relationship with Jesus Christ and in our relationship with each other. There are a couple of ways that you can be that right now. You can be bold and you can include more people by sharing this worship service. Um, whether you're watching on Facebook or YouTube, you can click that share button and share it with your community and people that you love and people who might be interested in building some community for themselves in this time, in this era. Um, and that you can also just share it with friends via the link. Copy the link and share it in the group chat. Send it to a friend who you think might like it. Um, being a part of a community is a real gift at this time, and it's a gift that I don't want us to keep to ourselves. If there's anyone else who wants to be a part of it, we want them to at least know how. Then we also would love to get to know you and what you're about and the ways that you can make us more bold, more inclusive, more relevant to your needs, and the ways in which God is shaping our community through you. The only way we ever figure that out is if you let us know who you are and what you're into and what ideas you have. And so the way that you can do that now is by clicking on, you'll see a pinned comment, our connect card. You can also reach it at bit.ly slash capital UVC capital C connect, or just click on the link in the pinned comment and there you'll find a really short, easy um, form to give us your name, your email, and tell us what you're about and what you're interested in. Uh, in our in-person worship, we often celebrate that ability to share ourselves with one another through something we call the holy tear-off, where we tear the piece of paper in which we can share our information and share who we are. But we're living in a new world, and so we're going to celebrate the holy click, where all at once we're going to click on that link, okay? And then we're going to do something even more fun, so get excited. Okay, one, two, three, connect! Good job, guys. Great, great. And now so that we can see one another's presence and feel it and love it right before our passing of the piece in a couple of minutes, we're all going to click the heart button or one of those little face emojis, depending on what feeling you're feeling right now, all at the same time. So ready, set, have a feeling. Ah, hearts abound. Yay. We're so glad to have you here. We have a couple of announcements of ways that you can be involved in this community um, that we would love to share with you and hear from you about. First, we are always trying to help one another at UVC. Um, if you check out the website or that connect form, um, you can find out lots of ways to get help or give help through volunteering to um, help at food pantries as this is a time of real food insecurity, through joining a care circle of people to encourage one another, of providing food to the three families that have new babies in our community right now, of making sure that you send them some love and care. Uh, the three links to those will be dropped in the comments or through applying for COVID relief, which you'll hear more about later, um, and you can also see there. But the big new way we have to help one another this week is that we want to connect one another to one another and share what we're going through through um, pastoral care office hours. So if you are in need of somebody to pray with or talk to, or you just kind of like need a place to vent or connect, every Monday, Tuesday, Thursday, and Friday, one of our pastors is going to be on Zoom at bit.ly slash UVC office hours, U V C O and H are capitalized and hours is HRS. That will make much more sense if you just click on the link that we're going to put in the comments. But um, from two to four, Monday, Tuesday, Thursday, Friday, someone will always be there to talk with you, to pray with you. You may end up, if the pastor is already talking to somebody, in something called the waiting room. That just means you'll be waiting there for a couple of minutes until they've wrapped up with the first person and then they'll be connecting to you if that happens. So no worries if it does. If those hours don't work for you, you work during the day, um, that doesn't work for your schedule, always reach out at any time to any of us and we're um, scheduling pastoral care lots of other hours too. 
Another way that we live out our faith is that we gather together and grow. You can find on our website or in the announcement, uh, um, or in our e-news, uh, ways we're doing that, like small groups, a disciple Bible study, lots of ways that you can join. The new ways that you can get involved are through a couple of AAPI gatherings this month. Um, one is coming up on May 9th, Saturday, an opportunity for anybody in the UVC community to discuss the documentary Grace Lee Boggs, an American Revolutionary. Um, there is a link to that for you to watch the documentary. And then we'll all be talking at 10 a.m. on Saturday. You can email Emily at emcginley at urbanvillagechurch.org to get the link to that Zoom. The other way that we're gathering and getting together is through movie nights. Every Tuesday at 7, we're going to have a UVC movie night. Um, we are starting this upcoming Tuesday with Always Be My Maybe on Netflix. Uh, it's a great romantic comedy. The following week, we'll be watching Crip Camp, A Disability Revolution. The week after that, the movie Come Sunday. And the week after that, John Leguizamo's Latin History for Morons. So it's going to be a real wide array of things that make you laugh and things that make you cry and things that are documentaries and things that are fiction. But all of them we want to talk about, which is why we've chosen Netflix, so that you can just download the app Netflix Party, and then we can all watch together and chat as we watch. So the thing about that is it's pretty simple, but you do need to RSVP to those events either through the Connect card on Facebook or by emailing me at Hannah K, H-A-N-N-A-H-K at urbanvillagechurch.org to let us know you want to participate so that you can be sent the link to that chat. And if you need any tech assistance at all, we've got you covered. We're going to help you and hook you up and figure it out. So email me and let me know. Finally, we want to extend the ministry that we experience so powerfully of help and growth and a deep connection beyond uh, what already exists to new people and new places. So many of you know who were at our town hall a couple weeks ago that we are considering um, planting a fifth and a sixth site. We're in different levels of kind of the process on both of those. And a lot of the people involved, Juan Pablo Herrera, Christian Kuhn, some of the launch team from the Potential River Forest site are going to be hosting a town hall on May 9th at 11 a.m. so that you can meet them and ask them questions directly and hear about why this matters to them and what it sounds like to them and, and all of the ways that they're excited. So again, um, you'll need to email us to get the Zoom link to that. You can email emily at emcginley at urbanvillagechurch.org or check out the links that are here in this slide. There is so much wonderful stuff going on in our community. We hope that you join some, any, or all of it and that if there's something you need that we haven't talked about that you let us know. So fill out that connect card, and now we will be passing peace to one another. Passing the peace is an ancient Christian tradition that we celebrate every week, where Jesus came to a room full of people whose whole lives had just changed. <laughs> the disciples after the death of their leader, they had no idea what was going to happen next. They were anxious and scared and weirded out and everything that you could possibly be. And when Jesus appeared to them, he said the word peace because he knows it's what we need to hear. And he knows that it is always on offer, no matter how discombobulated things feel. And so we say to each other to remind us of the peace that Christ gives us and the peace that we can offer one another, peace. You can do it by typing peace, by saying peace out loud, by putting a little uh, prayer hands or peace emoji, but peace be with you. We are grateful for peace shared among all of us. And we now invite uh, our testimony. We have testimony shared every single week here at Urban Village Church, where someone from the community shares what God is or isn't doing in their life. And today we're so glad to hear from John Michael Bagley. Welcome, John Michael. Hey everybody, it's John Michael from UVC Wicker Park. Um, and I am the testifier for today. Um, I'm still trying to figure out this whole recording thing, like whether or not I should be looking at the camera or my face, uh, to check if I look goofy. So please forgive me if I look goofy. Um, I'm really excited to be sharing what I've been thinking about and meditating on recently and what's been on my heart. Um, to be honest, for me personally, um, 
this has been a time and situation with a lot of ups and downs. Um, I'm really glad to be working remotely um, and to be teaching um, my students um, and still being able to engage with them. Um, and I'm glad that I'm quarantined with my roommates, um, who I'm getting to spend a lot more time with. Um, but I'm originally from New York, and um, my uh, 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 many of my communities back home have been affected by um, the virus, um, and that's been difficult to be away from. Uh, and so I've been thinking a lot about the phrase, um, God will never give you more than you can bear. And I've been thinking about it a lot um, because I don't know if as an adult, you know, even after hearing it a lot growing up um, in the church that I did, in the family that I did with the mother that I did, um, even after hearing it a lot it's difficult for me to look at my own personal experience and the experiences of others and say that that has always been true, that God has always intervened in situations where it's been too much or that uh, I or someone else has always been able to bear the trouble because it always seems, or it can seem that just thing after thing, trouble after trouble, um, circumstance after circumstance for many, um, just comes, um, and yeah, it's 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 really hard to be so far away um, from my family right now. But I think the thing that I have been finding um, comfort in is that in those times, um, in the past, and even right now, when I felt like um, there's that that like despair would be really easy to fall into when there's obvious reason to doubt an obvious reason to um to mourn um to take that along with um a dose of hope right to not discount the difficulty to not discount the fact that I really want to be home with my family um the fact that I really want to be taking care of those close to me um, to not discredit that, but to also, um, choose hope, to also choose life, um, to know, um, for sure, to know in my heart that God loves and cares for me and cares for us, um, because that care is just as real as, um, these situations, right? That care looks like people making me meals last year when financially I wasn't great. Um, that care looks like people checking up on me at the church um, when my job situation was crazy. Um, it looks like um, friends taking the time to um, talk to me about what, where my mind is at, even when I'm like, yeah, guys, I'm totally fine. I'm totally fine. Even though I'm, you know, my, my whole life is falling apart. I'm totally fine. Um, and even now it, it, it looks like, um, zoom calls. It looks like, um, you know, taking walks, um, and, and finding quiet in the beauty of nature. And even that as like an expression of God's love and grace, um, it looks like being able to have time to pick up my guitar and practice that and learn something new. Um, and it's certainly not perfect. It's certainly not ideal. I know um, a lot of the stuff that I'm going through probably um, is a lot easier for me to deal with than many who have more responsibilities and kids and bills. And a lot of that has become more complicated. And I don't know if I can say with certainty that that situation is always going to work out the way that we want it to. Um, nor can I say with any sort of certainty that I know what the will of God is for any particular life. Um, but I do know um, that God does love us and that he does care about us and that he shows us that love through the love that we give to one another. And so 
Um, I just want to encourage you today to choose that hope, to choose that love, to choose to see um, God's acts of love and the beauty of life, even in these moments, um, even while we acknowledge that things are difficult and, and tough. Um, yeah, the verse that keeps coming back to me right now is, I will bless the Lord at all times and his praise shall continually be in my mouth. Um, and I don't know if it's, it's easy to sing and to celebrate and to praise right now. Um, but yeah, that's, that's just the, the thing that's coming to my mind. That's just the thing that's on my heart to share. Um, is that even in these, these times, um, it's, it's difficult, but I, I think it's worth it. Um, the final thing that I, I want to, to close on is that, um, if you, if you have a chance, uh, this week, you should really pick up, uh, the Psalms and just read through a bunch of different Psalms. Um, because the Psalms are just this encapsulation of, uh, so much joy at some points and so much despair at other points. Um, so much jubilation and so much frustration. Um, and I think that a lot of our life as people of faith, as, as Christ followers is, um, that we take both, we take both and we acknowledge, um, that they are a part of the experience of life and yet, and still, and still God is good and still God is loving and still, um, God is, um, looking out for us. Um, so yeah, that's, that's what I've been thinking about and what I've been feeling. Um, and I hope that it was at least, um, an encouragement to you. Um, and if not, I hope something else will be something that you find, um, is a comfort. Uh, but I'm wishing you all well, uh, wishing you all lots of fun times, uh, where they can be found. Um, and yeah, the peace of God. Uh, thank you, John Michael, for sharing your story with us today. Uh, Church, would you extend your hands towards the screen as a show of gratitude for John Michael's life uh, and for the beautiful uh, story that he shared today of God's love? Let's pray. God, who shows up in our stories in the most amazing ways, we pause and we thank you for this day, for the challenges, the emotions, the struggle. For in all this, we grow closer to you. We pause and we thank you for, uh, we know that today through John Michael's testimony, we realize that when we wanted to hide, we have faced the day through your strength. Continue to show yourself present with John Michael and on his journey. And uh, Lord, guide his thoughts to those places where he was being loving. Strengthen those parts of himself so that he can continue to do your will. Thank you so much for all the love that he has been blessed with and help him in the moments ahead as he continues to serve students. We are grateful for his ministry and his service in our community. It is in your name, Jesus, whose gracious love sustains us every day. Amen. And now, church, uh, let's recite a prayer together. The words will be on the screen. God, we thank you for the journey we walk and that we do not walk alone. We thank you for your transformative work in each of our lives and the gift to witness that same work in others. Help us to see and share the ways that you are moving in our own lives so that others might also be strengthened for their journey. Amen. Thanks again, John Michael. Uh, today's scripture comes from the book of Matthew, chapter 14, verses 10 through 14 and verses 24 through 27. Listen to what God is saying. Then he had John beheaded in prison. They brought his head on a plate and gave it to the young woman, and she brought it to her mother. But John's disciples came and took his body and buried it. Then they went and told Jesus what had happened. When Jesus heard about John, he withdrew in a boat to a deserted place by himself. When the crowds learned this, they followed him on foot from the cities. When Jesus arrived and saw a large crowd, he had compassion for them and healed those who were sick. 
Right then, Jesus made the disciples get into the boat and go ahead to the other side of the lake while he dismissed the crowds. When he sent them away, he went up to a mountain by himself to pray. Evening came and he was alone. Meanwhile, the boat, fighting a strong headwind, was being battered by the waves, was already far away from land. The Word of God for the people of God. God is good all the time. All the time, God is good. We are also good. Good morning, my name is Chan Choi. My pronouns are he, him, his, serving urban village at Water and South Loop as a side pastor. And as you notice, I have tried to film my part of Sunday worship at different places without violating the order of state at home. Since I have showed most part of our house, I scratched my head over where would be the best place to share my message this morning. And I'm here at the attic. Last summer, when we toured the parsonage here in River Forest, this place caught my heart. It was my dream place. Even though there was no air conditioning, it looked like a perfect place to be alone for the meditation without any noise and distraction. It's been nine months since we moved in here, but I didn't have a chance to be alone like this morning because I was too busy to make extra effort for walking up a flight of stairs. As I imagine, this place is quiet and still, and I could feel like being disconnected from everything. So what would be the best word to describe this feeling, loneliness or solitude? And as I shared in the e-news, it seems to have a similar lexical meaning as a state of being alone, but it has a different implication. A German theologian, Paul Tillich, describes loneliness as a pain of being alone and solitude as a glory of being alone that brings joy and courage rather than fear and horror. So I do like to use the word of solitude this morning because it gives me comfort and peace, strength and energy. And these were values that I have been looking for a while during this pandemic. So how about you? In this pandemic, we may use the word of loneliness more than solitude because we are separated from others involuntarily, and fear and anxiety would be the significant emotions that we have experienced while we are being alone. So let me borrow Paul Tillich's words one more time. Loneliness can be conquered only by those who can bear solitude. Sometimes God pushes us to be alone like nowadays, And it is up to us how to embrace it in loneliness or solitude. Again, loneliness can be conquered only by those who can bear solitude. So if we are in loneliness, it cannot be solved by the end of pandemic. While it it has been postponing, our anxiety and fear would be getting worse. Rather, it can be only conquered when we bear solitude, when we find gifts, and value of it. So I'd like to introduce the one who loves to be alone, not in loneliness, but in solitude. And his name is Jesus. You may hear this name, right? And we can say he loves to be alone. From Mark chapter 1, very early in the morning, while it was still dark, Jesus got up, left the house, and went off to a solitary place where he prayed. Luke chapter 5, crowds of people came to hear him and to be healed of their sickness. But Jesus often withdrew to lonely places and prayed. At Matthew chapter 13, Jesus went out of the house and sat by the lake. There are more places where Jesus was separated from others and trying to be alone. We may need to say that Jesus was not only loving to be alone, but the solitude was also essential for Jesus and his ministry. And it might be the same to us. Solitude can benefit us if we use it as a time to be close to God and encounter wonder and peace. So, how many of you choose to be in solitude? All right, I can see that so many people who raise their hands, and it's awesome. And now, let us jump into today's passage. In Matthew chapter 14, we used to focus on the miracle stories. Miracle of feeding the 5,000, miracle of walking on water, miracle of healing the sick. 
Especially today, we may want to hear the methods of miracle, miracle of the end of pandemic. Amen. However, more important lessons can be found in between the miracles from solitude, where the power comes from, and where the call and missions are reconfirmed in the relationship with God. So, we need to pay attention to Jesus' solitude rather than miracles. And here is the first moment of solitude. Jesus tried to be alone right after the death of John the Baptist. We don't know how he responded to the executions of John. He would have been angry about this inhumane violence or he would have been in fear of death. However, we can assume that he was in sorrow because he lost John, his cousin and colleagues. As a fully human, Jesus needed a place to grieve, a place to release his sorrow, a place to face his own emotions. Jesus needed a solitude. Let us recall the experience that you were really, really sad and in sorrow. It could be the death of a family member or a close friend. You may be surrounded by the people who try to support you and comfort you to walk through the valley of shadows. And it could be huge help and source of healing from all the pain and sorrow. However, you may also want to be alone to release your honest emotions and reflect yourself in the process of grieving. Until I experienced the loss of one of my family members a few years ago, I felt it was important to keep reaching out to the person who is in grieving for not feeling alone. It is still important to remind them that they are surrounded by the support and care as whenever they can reach out in need. However, I realize that it is also important to give them a time and space to be alone for facing their own emotion and releasing one's sorrow fully. It took three days until I was in tears first time after losing my grandmother-in-law. While taking care of other family members and greeting visitors, I had never dropped tears. So I thought my grieving was over without drama. After finishing the funeral, I cried a lot at the fellowship hall when I was finally alone. I didn't need to take care of others, so I was able to focus on my own emotion. I didn't need to pretend completing the grieving process so quickly and fully, so I was able to start grieving finally. I was needed a solitude. I know there are many people who are in grieving after losing their loved ones, especially during this pandemic. There are people who couldn't hear their loved one's last words, couldn't give a hug to them. And worse than all, we couldn't grieve gathered as we used to do, and it would make people fe- being in deeper sorrow and pain in loneliness. If this is your story, this community is here for you. You can be our, we can be your company and source of support while you are in grieving. So please leave a comment or message or reach out to our step through email. And with those support, we can be in solitude where we can reflect ourselves and release our honest emotions to move forward. What does it mean to move forward? As Jesus did, it makes us to see others' need over our grief with compassion. It means it transforms our feeling of sorrow into willingness of loving others. In solitude, we can move forward over the grief as Jesus did. And the second solitude is happening right after feeding the 5,000. It was a great miracle of mercy that the people of Israel had been waiting for from their long-awaited Messiah. So Jesus would have built a great power and force to fight against the Roman Empire. However, he chose to be alone, the solitude. There would be two reasons why he made this decision. First of all, it might be a way to recharge after hard work. In Mark chapter 6, Jesus sent his disciples out to the ministry. When they returned, he encouraged them to be separated from others and rest a while. When I asked to people what would be the biggest challenge and challenge and hardship, many people told me that they lost their home. 
They have their physical house, physical building, but they lost their home where they can find peace and take a rest from the work. Because there is no boundary between the workplace and home nowadays. Remember, even Jesus needed a place for recharging and resting afterward. And here is more important reason why Jesus chose to be alone. It might be a way to reconfirm his call and mission in the close relationship with God. In the midst of threats and temptations, it would it would not be easy to keep following the call and the past, even if he had a full connection with God. He, so he chose to be alone, to listen to God's voice clearly by blocking all the noise and to make the right choice by deepening the relationship with God. When and where do you seek solitude? Please share your own experience on the comments. We may seek solitude when we need to make an important decision and to clarify our call from God. And in general, we may collect information and advice from others before making an important decision. And that's what I did at the last year of, last year of seminary in Korea. When I applied to the seminary, I thought there would be no more big decision like this. However, there were so many options of passes after graduating the seminary, like planting a church, joining a team ministry as a pastor, or serving as a chaplain at the hospital or somewhere else, or moving to another country for study. As much as I got more information and advice, it was getting harder and harder to make a decision. So, I went to a prayer house on the mountain and entered one of prayer rooms which looked like a cave. Literally, I was looking for a solitude to clarify my call and path. And I told myself that I'm not going back until I hearing a clear voice from God like, Chan, go and plant a new church in Seoul or even North Korea. However, there was no sign and voice from God. And after five hours long wrestling with God, two things happened to me. First, first there was a healing of my heart that I have experienced without knowing. And it was the very first time to see my own hurt and it was healed at the same time. And there was a voice of God from my deep heart. Chan, there is nothing that I want you to do for me. Just be with me. Let us walk together. That's what I want. In that experience of solitude, I didn't get an answer that I wanted to hear, but I was able to deepen my relationship with God that answers all my questions through my whole life. This morning, I hope you find yourself in solitude, not loneliness. I hope you can find a time and place to be alone for this. It is not about a physical isolation that can be impossible sometimes, but it is about your effort and intention to be alone in God's presence. And through this experience and practice of solitude, we can build a sound community when we gather together again because we can see each other's need with compassion over our own grief and emotion and because we can bring our own call and mission that we reconfirm in the close relationship with God and the passion and energy that is newly charged. So folks, do not be afraid of being alone. It might be a great opportunity to have a special closeness with God. Amen. Now they, there are tones of Zoom meeting and there is a typical question to be asked. What are you grateful for? So you can simply share this on the comments. For me, I'm grateful for my family, especially Vian, who is helping me to record this. And I'm grateful for this beautiful weather. And I'm going to pray hard for this weather to be still beautiful on May 3rd morning. But I always say this as a top. I'm grateful for Urban Village community. Because this community is where I can be myself, where I can grow spiritually, 
where I can live as a disciple of Jesus Christ. Thank you, Urban Village. And thank you for your financial and spiritual support for this community. You can find the information on the screen about the online giving through our website. Please visit urbanvillagechurch.org slash give or simply text give to the number on the screen. And if you prefer to send a check, please contact office at urbanvillagechurch.org. And you can also find the information about our COVID-19 support fund from our community page on the website. And it'll be also great, another great way to be a community. Again, thank you for your support. Hi, my name is Christian Kuhn. I'm the pastor of Emerging Ministries at Urban Village. I'm also the pastor at River Forest United Methodist Church. My pronouns are he, him, and his. I am standing here in our kitchen. We enjoy having people over for uh, dinner parties, uh, and one day we'll be able to do that again. If you've ever been to a dinner party, you know that while it's always great to gather at the table with everyone, a lot of times the real happenings take place here in the kitchen before everything, uh, before we all sit down and have a meal together. So that's why I wanted to stand here in the kitchen today as we prepare ourselves for this time of communion. And thinking about different stories in the scriptures around meals, the kitchen pops up uh, one time, it's according to the message translation, the story of Mary and Martha. This happened to Luke 10. You may be familiar with that story. If you're not, I want to read a little bit of it to you. This is from Luke 10. And it says, As they continued their travel, Jesus entered a village. A woman by the name of Martha welcomed him and made him feel quite at home. She had a sister, Mary, who sat before the master, hanging on every word he said. But Martha was pulled away by all she had to do in the kitchen. Later, she stepped in, interrupting them. Master, don't you care that my sister has abandoned the kitchen to me? Tell her to lend me a hand. The master said, Martha, dear Martha, you're fussing far too much and getting yourself worked up over nothing. One thing only is essential, and Mary has chosen it. It's the main course and won't be taken from her. There's lots of interpretations of this passage. Jesus seems to lift up Mary as the one who has chosen well, but can we stop for a moment and give some credit to Martha? Because the church and so much of our faith is built on those who are Marthas, those who go to so much work to do all that needs to be done, the people behind the scenes. So I want to lift up Martha today because I want to lift up those who are behind the scenes in our city, in our world, who don't get the credit they deserve. Last week we talked about whenever we gather together for communion, we remember and give thanks to God who created so much for us, and we remember that Jesus also give th gave thanks when he was at his meal. Last week, Hannah led us in a time of thanksgiving for so many different things in our lives. But today, I want you in the comments below, or if you're at home and maybe write this down on a piece of paper or whisper it to yourself or shout it out, let's give thanks to those who are behind the scenes, to those who don't get enough credit, to those who are doing their work faithfully, and yet we may not see what they are doing. So many of the essential healthcare workers that don't get enough attention, the people who are delivering our packages, who are delivering food and groceries for us, the men and women who are keeping us safe in our city. Let us name them uh, in the comments below, whether you're on Facebook Live or on YouTube, so that we can uh, give shouts of thanksgiving to those 
who are go who go unheralded, just like the Marthas of our world, the Marthas in the kitchen. And it's the same Marthas. Later in John 11, we read Martha actually gives a really wonderful testimony about who Jesus is. Jesus asks her about that, and she says, All along I have believed that you are the Messiah, the Son of God who comes into the world. So the Marthas also are ones who can still testify about the power of God in their midst. So we give thanks as we start this meal together. We give thanks to God who has given us so much, and we give thanks for all the different individuals who have given so much to us behind the scenes. We praise God. We lift up thanks to God for all of them. We also, when we gather together at this table, in addition to giving thanks to God, we remember Jesus, who preached good news to the poor, freedom to those who were held captive, and healed those who were sick. He gathered with his closest followers on the night in which he gave himself up for us, and he took bread. Again, giving thanks, giving it to his followers, and said, take, eat, eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. When the supper, supper was over, Jesus took the cup. I'm using today this lovely mug that we got in Aruba. Jesus took the cup and then gave it to his disciples and said, Drink from this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. And so we give thanks to God. We remember Jesus, and we also call upon the Holy Spirit to be here with us uh, wherever you are watching this. And I'll call upon the Spirit now to be here in this home as I'm speaking to you. We call upon the Spirit to intercede in our lives, and we lift up prayers of healing for those who desperately need God's presence and healing in their life. We lift up uh, prayers of intercession in so many areas in our city that are treated unjustly. We also lift up prayers, perhaps, for comfort for ourselves, healing for our own uh, bodies and minds. I want to lift up some time of silence now. And so take a moment in this silence to lift up whatever is going on in your own life and ask the Spirit to intercede in that way. Perhaps it's forgiveness, too, for ways in which we have fallen short of what God calls us to do and to be. And so we lift up these prayers in silence and ask that the Spirit intercede in our lives. I invite you now, after lifting up your own individual prayers, to join in saying the Lord's Prayer. There will be a version of that prayer on your screen, and we invite you to use whatever translation you enjoy, whether you are a debt or a trespass or a sinner type of person saying the Lord's Prayer. And so let us say this together. Our Father and Mother, who art in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory, now and forever. Amen. God, pour out your Spirit on us on these gifts of bread and cup. Make them be for us the body and blood of Christ, that we may be for the world the body of Christ, transformed by his love. Because there is one loaf, we who are many partake of the one loaf. The bread which we break is a sharing in the body of Christ. The cup over which we give thanks is a sharing in the blood of Christ. And so, however you are sharing in this meal today, know that you are welcome at whatever table you're at, whether you're sitting on your couch or you're on the floor, or standing up, however you are celebrating this. Hopefully you've gone to the kitchen for some sustenance. And so however, whatever you are using, feel free to do that now. Take part of the bread and use it in the cup, knowing that the body and blood of Christ are given just for you. And so we have come together in this time of sharing this meal together, the kitchen, where it all happens. And we trust and believe that God is also continuing to be present in your lives. 
for those who are out front and seen by others. And today, particularly, we remember those who are behind the scenes, making sure everything is working well, too. For both the Marys and the Marthas, we give thanks. It's our last song, so let's make this one count. Please lift up your voices, lift up your hearts, lift up your minds, because through God we are truly free. It's a tradition at UBC Edgewater. We like to dance it up at the end. We invite the children to come forward. All ages can come forward. rest of your Sunday. Amen. Thank you so much for being a part of our service today. Uh, I want to invite you, if you're able, to join us for a time of fellowship afterwards. Um, you can find the link to the coffee hour uh, at the end of this service after we sign off here. Um, but uh, for now, I wanted to bless you all out of this space. Um, and I a few weeks ago, I shared a knock-knock joke that some of you felt like was not actually a joke, and so we'll do one now. Knock-knock. Who's there? Ach. Ach who? God bless you. Nah. God bless you as you leave this space and go into your week. And now may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the binding fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you in this moment and forevermore. Go in peace. <laughs>